welcome to the cinema. I'm Josh Reed D. Falcon, and today I'm going to be ranking all 21 main Stranger Things characters from my least favorite to my favorite. Being one of my favorite shows, there's so much difficult choices to make while making this list from least favorite to favorite and actually denoting a placement for each. But make sure to comment down below your placement of how you would rank these characters and main characters could be varied from list to list of what you consider a main character. So these are just the 21 that are my personal favorites that I denote throughout the show that we have. And coming in 22 we have Sam Owens. Now this isn't a horrible character. He just always has a placement of doing what he needs to do but doesn't have a huge placement of what he is doing. And coming in 21 we have Argyle. He's used for the humor, used for the laughs, but doesn't offer a huge substantial role otherwise than that. And number 19 we have Mary Bauman. One that is again sort of used for laughs but also has this different skill sets that really helps amplify the story but overall not a huge fan of his character and his personality. In 18 we have Bob Newby, one that has great personality and always is doing his best to help Will within season 2 but unfortunately he dies off at that which brings a sad death but overall there's not too much more to his character than the rest of the cast. And 17 we have Erica Sinclair. Well she can be a little annoying at times. I love the personality where she can hold her own and always bosses even Eddie and the rest of the Dungeon and Dragon crew and just bringing some fun entertainment to the table. And 15 we have Jonathan Byers. Now this is a hit or miss character whether the mom is great or it's a little bit of a miss because I root for Stancy over Jancy but overall there's still some good moments that he has for bringing this scene together. Next up we have Lucas Sinclair who definitely has his moments to shine but it often feels like one of the lesser of the kids based on how much he appears and how much of a role he plays into the long game. And in 14 we have Jim Hopper, one that really holds strong throughout most of the season. In season 4 I'm not a huge fan of his particular arc so it does degrade his character a little bit. And 13 we have Billy Hargrove. Now this is one that stands strong in the villainous type of character he is. Just being a poorly treated character by his father and you get that story and then becomes such a great arc within how he becomes one of the Flay and then how he becomes one of the ultimate sacrifices. And 12 we have Will Byers again another one that's a little bit lesser but he does have this substantial story arc even though he's gone for most of the first season you still get enough from him from season 2 and 3 and a little bit of 4 that still makes him really enjoyable and really plays a strong character. In number 11 we have Nancy Willer speaking just enough that she plays her own. She's a strong minded person and the way she goes about doing things is always her own way and really brings a lot to advancing the story along and advancing the arc of the Upside Down. And coming in at number 10 we got Mike Wheeler who's just the crush of Eleven and just the way they go about using this character you really enjoy the relationships he has with the rest of the crew and he's almost sort of the leader of all the kids that we got thus far. And number nine we have Joyce Byer uh, just really enjoyable just because she's a strong mother who is always willing to fight against to protect her kids and just the way it is portrayed is just really well done. Number eight we have Eddie Munson only seen in one season and one season alone that it just brings so much to him so quickly defending him and scarring him bringing him into the world of Stranger Things so quickly and so fast that we uh, hardly get enough of his character before he died. And number seven we have Margin Brenner. I just absolutely love this scientist type of character that is a monster of his own means but is still defending his own will to do what he wants is right in his own way and that's what exactly makes him a mad scientist and I love that type of character. And number six we have Eleven the telepathic girl that just really amplifies what this season is, who this 
character is for what she's providing for the rest of the group and being the MVP of the characters in most time. At number five, we have Max Mayfield coming, introducing in season two. She's sort of left out of the boat of what's going on in the first season she's in. And then she's experiencing the trauma with her brother in season three and season four. She becomes that much substantial of a character and so strong in her own willpower to fight against even number one and just the way they're going about that is really strong and brings such a strong arc. And number four, we have Robin Buckley. Now, this is another one that's introduced really fast. You love her quirkiness. You love everything she's bringing with her relationship with Steve, but then building on the dynamic duos with Dustin and Erica and just even in season four, other characters as well. And number three, we have Vecna, one of the greatest villains for sure, just adding so much depth to his character, being number one and then being this other character, just is so well fleshed out, so well mannered, establishing so much behind the meaning of what brings Stranger Things to what it is today. And number two, we have Steve Harrington, just one of the best arc for me personally, just going from this sort of bully or someone that's not super well suited for what he's going for in life. And Nancy kind of changes that, but also just the way they're going, experiencing the upside down. You see a lot of changes going on in his life and you start to relate to some certain quirks that are going about with what he is doing and how he is helping the kids and the other people to the fullest. But that leaves at number one, Dustin Henderson, and I hope he never changes because that is really compelling character, just the quirkiness and the goofy smile and everything about his character adds so much to the duos or trios or even the whole group that he's in, always bringing a little bit of a laugh but not being used just solely as a comedic character. He brings so much, his relationships for everyone just works so well and that's what puts him at my own number one. So that's just how I would rank the main characters of Stranger Things from my least favorite to my favorite. Let me know that in comments below how you would rank these characters because this isn't the right list. We all have our own perspective and connection to each of these characters. So that's all for today. Make sure to check out any of the Stranger Things review that you missed. Thank you for watching. Bye for now.